The support of TNT Express also enabled the World Food Program to promote activities tied to school meals, including the establishment of school gardens, the improvement of school infrastructure, kitchens, toilets, and hand pumps, and the erection of classroom blocks in rural Gambia. Louis Mendy, GRTS. The President, His Excellency Chef Professor Al Haji Dr. Yahya Jame, will present Christmas gifts to the Christian community tomorrow, Friday, 23rd December 2011, at the State House Ground Spanjul at 10 in the morning. The Gambia Christian Council is hereby requested to go for the said gifts for their people. You can also follow those stories and other GRTS programs live on our website at www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS Radio Live. From there we take our first break. We'll be right back. It is a story of a land where communication has been our song, our drumbeat. This is who we are. We dream of a better future. One that is upon us now. We are close to the heart of the world. We are as old as time. The soul of man began with us. We are Africa. Military prosecutors in the Ivory Coast are warning against unruly behavior in the ranks of security personnel in that country. The tough talking comes in the wake of a spate of alleged offenses by those paid to protect the citizenry. The authorities say those who use their weapons with impunity will be taught a bitter lesson and the undisciplined brought before a military tribunal. Let's look at the CFI report for more on that. Military commanders in Côte d'Ivoire have made it known there's to be a zero-tolerance regime against rogue behavior by members of the armed forces. In the period following the end of the civil conflict eight months ago, there have been numerous incidents of indiscipline in the ranks, including thefts, intimidation of civilians and even murder. We will continue to crack down on any individuals who break the rules any person transgressing the law will find themselves deprived of their liberty. A military prison opened last month in Abidjan. A number of officers who had supported the ousted ex-president Laurent Bagbo are being held there. Recently, about 20 soldiers from the government army were put behind bars while they wait court-martial on serious ill-discipline charges. A further 15 are on a wanted list issued by the National Gendarmerie. All those who commit crimes will be brought before the military tribunal. Those convicted will be deprived of their liberty. They must be taught a lesson that military weapons cannot be used with impunity. They are not toys that you are given for Christmas. The office of the military prosecutor says the court-martial will start early in January in Abidjan. At the same time, the military chiefs have announced that all members of the armed forces in Côte d'Ivoire are to follow a civic education course. This is designed to ensure... Banking. Size is a key success factor. The Electoral Commission in the Democratic Republic of Congo has suspended the publication of the results of the parliamentary election that followed the disputed presidential ballot and is asking for international technical assistance to ensure a credible outcome and the Egyptian Prime Minister is appealing for a peaceful national dialogue against the backdrop of clashes that left some 15 people dead. For details of this and other happenings on the African continent, we go with this round of both news. Democratic Republic of Congo's Independent Electoral Commission suspends publication of the results of the parliamentary elections, which followed the recent presidential vote. The Commission appealed for international technical assistance to ensure the outcome is credible. The European Union has warned it would withdraw financial support for DR Congo if the Commission could not deliver an improvement. IMF President Christine Lagarde concludes her Africa tour with a visit to Niger. In talks with President Isufu, the consequences of the world economic crisis on countries in Africa and particularly the impact on youth unemployment. 
Madame Lagarde admitted to legislators in Niger that the outlook for 2012 is looking gloomy. She urged policymakers to build on the advantages of mineral reserves and raw materials. Egyptian Prime Minister Kamal al ganzouri makes an appeal for a peaceful national dialogue. The Premier called on Egyptians to have a united approach to safeguard the economy. At the same time, al ganzouri promised not to stay in office any longer than is necessary. His broadcast follows clashes between security forces and anti-government demonstrators, which left 15 dead. Off the coast of Nigeria, the equivalent of 40,000 barrels of crude oil floating in the Atlantic. The oil slick, around 100 kilometers off the coast, came from a leak from an offshore oil rig. The Shell Corporation, which operates the rig, says all efforts are being made to limit damage, including spraying dispersants. The spills believed to have occurred as oil was being transferred to a tanker. At least 60 people were left dead and 100 others injured when as many as 14 bombs went off in various locations in the Iraqi capital Baghdad. The explosions which occurred during the early morning rush hour underline the political crisis that is brewing in the conflict weary nation as a result of sectarian differences between rival politicians. We have more in this report. Baghdad was ravaged by a series of bomb attacks this morning. At least 60 people were killed and hundreds wounded. As many as 14 bombs went off in different locations throughout the capital. The attacks were the deadliest in months. We are citizens, innocent people. What have we done? If the politicians are powerless to do anything, they should step down. The explosions occurred during the morning rush hour. Both car bombs and improvised explosive devices were used. The targets were mostly Shiite neighborhoods. These attacks remind Iraqis that their lives are still in danger. My little girl was in bed sleeping. She woke up to find herself covered in broken glass. She's terrified. Why is security and stability impossible in this country? No one has yet claimed responsibility for the attacks but they come as the government struggles to resolve a political crisis following the issue of an arrest warrant for the Sunni vice president. Sunni ministers are boycotting the National Assembly. They accuse Nouri al-Maliki, a Shiite, of monopolizing power. We now take our second break. The biggest bank in West Africa is expanding in the Gambia. Priding itself on excellent customer service delivery, Zenith Bank Gambia opens a new branch on number 9 Nelson Mandela Street in Banjul. All your banking services and transactions for sending and receiving money through Western Union, Money Express and RIA. At Zenith Bank, we put people, technology and service first. Zenith Bank, always in your best interest. Canny Life Family Farms informs its esteemed customers and the general public of the availability of high-quality cooking oil for sale with effect from Friday, 23 December 2011 at the State House outlet. The retail price for a cup of oil is $9.50 budut, while the price for the 20-liter drum is pegged at $880 at the State House outlet and $900 at any other outlet. Canny Life Family Farms wishes everyone a happy Christmas. And before we go, a reminder of our headlines. President Jame has launched the program for accelerated growth and employment or page, the four-year national development plan that succeeds the PRSP2. Lawmakers looking into the finances and operations of public institutions and corporations have called for judicious use of the taxpayer dollars. Military prosecutors in the Ivory Coast are warning the country's security forces against unruly behavior as the authorities there strive to restore sanity in the army. 
and a string of bomb attacks in the Iraqi capital Baghdad have killed some 60 people, raising fears of sectarian violence in the conflict.